when we've had clients that have been devout vegans and they come in here, what we're talking about, and they begin, to, they finally begin to understand the truth about the rubbish they've been told about B12. And when they finally begin to understand the truth about amino acids and they go, okay, I hate the idea of it, but I'm going to give it a try. We've had vegans have massive health turnarounds from, from having fish or meat once a month. That's the magic of meat. Now, I'm not saying we, could, we should only eat it once a month, but I'm just with you on, I don't believe, by the way, that food is medicine. I don't, I don't like that expression, food is medicine. I, food is food. And the minute we start treating it like medicine, it means we only have to eat the good stuff when we're sick. So I, I don't see it as medicine, but when it's absent and you bring it back, wow. Yeah, magic, boom. And there's plenty of stories. If you guys wanna hear the story of Elise and Tim, uh, they're both uh, pretty well-known vegans. You can find that one on the podcast in the past, Elise Parker, Tim Sheaf was a world champion free runner. They both told their stories. They were, you know, they had millions and millions of followers. Tim was actually in the Game Changers and asked them to remove his footage uh, from the movie because he stopped being a vegan. And, and Tim's story is famous. He's the guy who made headlines all over the world when he you know, talked about the fact that he had this first wet dream in five years, the night after he ate salmon, after you know five plus years of being a vegan. And Elise described brain fog and complete yep. loss of libido and recovery within days after including uh, salmon in her diet. So yeah, if you guys want to- There are two podcasts, reasons that I think veganism um, catches on. So with three, if you talk about emotions and stuff, but I'm just talking, there's two physical reasons that it happens. And as a reformed vegan myself, I, I can tell you what I, my experience and why I think this happens so often. In, I mean, you're ultimately, you, you may be a doctor, but ultimately you're a scientist. And so you understand that if you want to conduct an experiment, you have to have all the things controlled and have one flex, right? You're testing one thing. And that's the biggest problem we have with food science. These daily mail guys are going, oh, it's an egg that's doing it, but they're not, they're not flexing only that one thing. They're eating muffins. So what happens for a lot of people is they're on the standard American diet and they're medium healthy. They don't know that they're not healthy. They don't realize they have pain and inflammation because they kind of just get used to it. And then one day they decide they want to lose some weight and somebody goes, you got to become a vegan and go on your water fast and you got to eat your wheatgrass like because I have four stomachs. No, I don't. But I, okay, so I start doing it. But so what I start doing is I start eating a bunch of wheatgrass and all this kind of stuff, which actually does have an alkalizing effect, which will do some good at a bigger cost than it's worth, but it may do some biochemical good. But then the biggest thing is, is that I've stopped eating processed food. I've stopped eating dark garbage fats. I've stopped eating rubbish meat. I, 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 I've also stopped eating meat entirely, but I've stopped eating rubbish meat and all this stuff. And all of a sudden my acne has gone, my eczema is gone, my this is gone, my that's gone, my inflammation gone. Look, I've got a six pack. It's because I'm, and none of those changes, not one of those changes changes your identity except removing of the meat. When you remove the processed food, you don't become a non-processed fooditarian. When you remove the, the, the ridiculous trans fats, you're not like a, a non-trans fatitarian. But when you remove the meat, they've done it so well. You have an identity. So all the changes you made, you made 100 changes and one of them changed your identity. And now you're a vegan. And so you believe that your identity change is what made you healthy. And it wasn't. It was everything else. That's principle number one that causes this problem with veganism. And, and I'm sure you've seen it time and time again. And problem number two comes back to what I said earlier, and that is I don't believe that we do need meat every day. I believe that we're incredibly capable of buffering B12. We're incredibly capable of buffering amino acids and fats. And so if we have to go for a month or two or three or even a year without meat, we can do it. And that creates the illusion that veganism can work. Until it doesn't, until people crater nutritionally and- yeah. Of course. Up in really, really dire straits. You're right though. We certainly can survive without meat for some amount of time. And then we learn as Tim and Elise and so many. Do you people. know, do you know David Wolf? David oh, yeah. Avocado oh, Wolf? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. So so he and I spoke at a conference together some years ago. And and at the time I was doing a lot of work with Tony Robbins and Tony's team. Tony actually asked me if I would come and teach the programs they have in Hawaii. And one of them was called like uh, life mastery. And it all was about food and stuff. So I went to Fiji to go see it. I, I did it 20 years earlier. So I wanted to go and, and it was all about veganism. And I'm like, but Tony's not a vegan. Like what, why? Cause they just hadn't re-recorded the videos in 10 years. Like okay, what's going on? Oh no, no, we're going to redo it. We're going to redo it. Uh, and one of the videos is David Wolf talking about being a vegan and I'm like, but, but he's not. He's not a vegan. And so I publicly said this on a podcast one day that he's not a vegan. I get a, I get a call from, uh, I had a WhatsApp call from David. What the hell are you doing telling people I'm eating cheeseburgers and pizza? I go, David, 
I have never said that. Never, ever have I said that. He goes, well, this guy called me up and he says, you're telling people I eat meat and all this kind of stuff and my fans are going to go. No, you can't. You can't do all that. I go, David, this is what I said. And if I'm wrong, I'm, I'm, if I'm wrong, A, with what I said, I will apologize publicly. And B, if you can find the video that says that, I eat you, that you eat pizza, I'll eat my hat, which is leather. And that won't be vegan either. So let's go into it. So this is what I said. I said that my belief is that you are no longer vegan. And that is that you get antlers from deer and you boil them to make bone broth for yourself because you've recognized that veganism is incomplete and this is the best ethical solution you've been able to find. And he goes, yeah, that's what I do. And I go, that's all I've ever said. And he goes, but that's not what the guy told me. And he called me back about a week later and he goes, I've seen the video. That's exactly what you said. It's a, it's a fair representation of the truth. And then he goes, but there's one problem. He said, you, you called me a nut bar in the video. And I go, well, David, and he goes, all right, fair enough. 